Your legs are so shiny. Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. I'm Theo. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And we are still in Scotland! This is our last night in Scotland. Yep. And so we thought it would be prudent to record a Scotland Reflections podcast, which is, by the way, the title of this podcast, which you already know. <laughs> yeah, we are um, a little over 23 hours away from taking off, so we thought this what? would be a... Yeah, it's... Well, oh, sorry, not 23. 11 hours. Why? Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> Why did I say 24? I was waiting to say, what is that? Anyways, 11. What are you on? 12, 12 hours <laughs> subtracted back. Anyways... So we're 11 or so hours away from taking off, so we thought this would be a great opportunity to take a look at the entire two-week trip and try to, to condense our thoughts down into, into some meaningful highlights, or the, the best of real. And as always in Scotland, we are joined by our native guide, Theo. Hello. So, Icebreaker, yeah. what is the thing that you didn't expect to encounter is the thing or situation or object or person that you didn't expect to encounter in Scotland that you did. Right. Um, I was f- pre-warned or forewarned that this might happen, but I still didn't really expect to, to... drink as much as you did. Oh, actually, I expected to drink more. I'm surprised <laughs> that I didn't. Um, no, I, I was warned about... Um, I didn't really have a context for Bob, but um, I was a little, a little given a fair bit of warning about playing music and whatnot. And I thought, okay, I'll just be able to hide in a corner and not worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Bob is very persuasive. Bob is very encouraging, and I did not expect to play live music. Now, it's live music in the sense that it was a backyard jam, but it was not just a couple of us sitting around in a circle. Like there was what, fifteen people yeah, ish, in ish. the circle. Um, and so it was essentially a live, a live performance. Um, I mean, I wasn't soloing. I mean, I did sing in front of people, but yeah. I wasn't soloing. Um, and yet, nevertheless, I did not expect to, to play live music. I thought that was going to be the exclusive domain of Jim. <laughs> you jammed like a champ, though. I tried. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Mine, I was not mentally prepared for how small Scotland is. Like, today we went for a short drive. Yeah. We were gone for, what, a couple hours? A couple hours. Uh, we went to four small towns, including one to get lunch, one to see some things, one to visit uh, that antique store mm-hmm. that Bob runs, different Bob. And we, in Canada, you can't do that. If you want to go to four small towns in Canada, unless you're right next to a city, odds are good that you're gone for the whole day. You know, it's, it's an hour between towns... Uh, at least towns of any size where they have something cool, like a bookstore. <laughs> and I have understood for this entire trip that Scotland is small, but I, w- I just, I also don't drive, so like I wasn't expecting Scotland to essentially be basically the size of my hometown, like as a country. Or it's just like, yeah, we'll just drive there. It'll take, like, 20 minutes. I'm like, well, we're going to a whole other town to get lunch. Yeah, yeah, 20 minutes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and the, and it's not, like, 20 minutes through the city or anything like that. It's There's rolling countryside and farmer's fields and the whole nine. And then you're in another town. Some small regional thing where all the houses are made of stone and it's very quaint. Mm-hmm. We found thatched roofs today as well. That's, oh my god! Please, <laughs> as a country, understand that thatched roofs are a bad idea. <laughs> to be fair, most of the houses in there are. This is not the seventeenth century. That house was from the seventeenth century. I'm aware. We've moved on. <laughs> no, that was that house was fifteenth uh, century. Yes, yeah. sixteen oh, yeah, sixteen ten. Yeah, sorry, fifteenth century. I yeah. think it was written on the lintel. Yeah, so. you're right. Fifteenth century. Sixteen ten is the seventeenth century. It is, yeah, I was right. I'm so this confused. This is the right 21st now. century. Wait, what did you say originally? 17. Oh, oops. Wait, I was right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're the native guy. You were right. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm right. <laughs> All right, that's two strikes for Huck. <laughs> <laughs> Fail, failing at math. Your coat right. is on a shiggly peg right now. Yeah. Phrases that I learned shiggly peg. <laughs> ears. Or the, don- right, the so, donkey ears one. So, what's your favorite thing about Scotland? 
um, or favorite thing that you visited. What is something you learned while you were here? And what is the reflection that you would have if you, if you, if we started this trip over, which we are not doing, we're flying out, we're going home. I'm glad, because I'm getting put at 3 a.m. to take you to the airport. Yes. Um, what would you do differently? Those are our sort of three questions for today. Uh, so favorite thing. Huck, go. Uh, did we want to do like all three in a row or just no, no, like no, each favorite topic? thing. All right. Favorite thing. Um, I don't have a, a cute head to the headline for this or a title for this section um it, it's just all of the interesting things that i learned or the fact that that there were so many interesting things to learn uh when i was uploading photos um i found it really fun and sometimes challenging to remember all of the things that would be associated with that picture so like uh bobby the little dog from yeah, yeah. edinburgh uh there's a, now that I think about it, there's a lot of Bobs and Bobbies in Scotland. There's a whole book yeah. written about Greyfriars Bobby. Like, yeah, yeah. Your book on it. Uh, the, but the stuff that Bob from the antique shop was telling me, the stuff that Bob, the musician, was telling me. Spoilers, <laughs> like, there's a lot of Roberts in this, yeah. in this country. Yeah. And Robert's a big deal in Scotland. Yeah. Um, the things Colin was, was telling me about, you know, the various um, places around town and outside of town. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's kind of hard to distill it down to a favorite thing. Thing like there's no one piece of trivia that and I and yet learned. you're going to what is it oh god <laughs> you're so mean all right since we're recording let me pass and we'll come back to me and I'll, all right I'll, I'll all come right, up fine, with, a, with a favorite my favorite thing um I had lots of good times I played lots of music I hung out with cool people I met a bunch of neat people I ran a D D game my favorite thing was the Wallace Monument of course it was um not not. Like, like there, there is the obvious Scotland trolling reasons for that. Links to the Scotland trolling video down below. You did see our, you, you may have seen our video uh, that we did at the top of the Wallace Monument as well. I'm kind of glad I wasn't there for that. Yeah, I'm kind of glad you weren't there for that too. Because <laughs> I may have punched you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but the Wallace Monument is, as it sounds, it is a monument dedicated to William Wallace and his sort of life and works. And I. I have been making shit up about William Wallace for like a year about how Braveheart is the canonical history of Scotland and oh my god it's been so wonderful <laughs> for you and you walk up the William the, the the Wallace Monument you walk up all these steps 200 and some something 46 yeah that, that number and you find out not just the history of William Wallace but you find out the history of the monument itself the monument was only built in the 19th century um, it was proposed and completed entirely in the 19th century. It was finished in, like, 1869. Yeah. And, uh... So, <laughs> it's not even that old. It, it William Wallace himself had nothing to do with the Wallace Monument. Not a bit. It's sort of this created thing in part to commemorate a piece of Scottish history, but also in part to sort of, I think, mold New Scotland in the sense of of being full of tourist attractions and it, like even from the beginning you can see in the Wallace Monument like yeah. um, th promotional flyers and stuff from the 19th century yeah and you know so it it in my head marks this shift of of not just celebrating Scottish history but also using the celebration of Scottish history as a way to like drive their economy which seems really interesting in a lot of different ways um there's also on the i think it's the second floor of the monument you can see this um they have all these busts uh, yeah. of every famous scott who's ever lived every so it's not sir every. walter david, scott david hume was in there it's david livingston <laughs> adam smith uh and i was really intrigued to note that even to this day. Because they would presumably still be adding heads. Because uh, some of them were added in, in the, like, the 1940s. They haven't added any in the last 10 years I know of. Yeah, but to this day, there have never been any famous Scottish women. Or people of color. No. Women in Scotland have accomplished nothing at all, apparently. <laughs> sure. I mean, well, if you believe the Wallace yeah. Monument, yeah. which I do not, um, but it is, it is, in that sense, it is a memorial to a particular kind of Scotland, 
And I think that that is a Scotland that I have seen romanticized and and sort of embodied in all kinds of of sort of rural Scottish history things and, and, and stuff like that. I mean, we have seen a lot of fucking bronze statues. Huck has so many pictures of bronze statues. Mm-hmm. I have not seen a bronze statue of a lady. Mm-hmm. Like, forget a person of color. Like, like, let us imagine that that leap is too great. Yeah, yeah. I have not seen a bronze statue of a lady. That's, that one does annoy me as well. In fact, there's a statue of a dog. There is no. a statue of a dog. But there's several statues of dogs, and there's not one of a woman. Yes. And that is a thing that I find disquieting, but I find it embodied in, in the ever-romanticized Wallace Monument, where you can buy commemorative William Wallace teddy bears <laughs> and commemorative William Wallace uh, shortbread and commemorative William Wallace Scotland toques. It's one of those things as well, though, in that sort of era of history, women will ever mention is if they helped out the guys. Like, the Jacobite Rebellion, 1745, Bonnie Prince Charlie had to escape after Culloden. Mm-hmm. He escaped to Sky. It was her maid, Flora MacDonald, was the woman who helped him escape and helped him escape to France from there. She's remembered in the Sky Boat song, but only because she helped him. Hmm. So, it's, again, it's in context of around this guy she is remembered. So what you're saying is there aren't a lot of Scottish, Scottish ballads that pass the Bechdel test. Still, uh, the the Wallace Monument remains my my sort of favorite thing. I, I stood at the summit, and I I made up bullshit about William Wallace in his very monument, and realized that I had ascended to my true power. Got maximum troll. Yes, uh, I under I underwent the quickening. <laughs> Ryan, favorite thing. Um, it, this I guess we'll come back to the comment you made uh, in the pre-show uh i guess it really does come down to antique bob um only insofar as i i don't know that he would appreciate the name antique bob he is quite old he's quite old but uh, but i need to separate him out from music bob fair i think the fact that you're even talking about something like this he'd probably over the moon ah, he yeah. was super stoked to see you again today yeah i think it's um like on one level uh i th- i thought it might be a little rude to go back just for the sake of getting a picture um, and then that's why I made a point of purchasing something from his shop to at least you know like kick him some money in that regard. Not that he needs money, but you know what I mean. Like, I don't want to just be that tourist that takes a picture and leaves, and then you know like oh people come in and look at around at his shop all the time, and and who how, how knows who knows what his turnover like his conversion rate is in terms of people walking in versus customers. So but, so let us place this in context. In Falkland, there is an antique shop run by a man named Bob. Yep. Um, it's he sells antiques, old things, and primarily and, violins and old violins, like, like su- old super violins. old violins. Uh, all I did not hand. buy one. He mentioned he mentioned yesterday that uh, he has a real problem with keeping bows. Like people will come in to buy bows from him all the time, um, but um, bows are less common to get than the violins are. So he needs to hold on to all of them that he can get. But hmm. but he's like telling a lot of cool stuff, you know. Um, Roseanne Cash and Johnny Cash and whatnot, uh, they found out that Johnny's family was from the region, so Roseanne Cash pops in, you know, two times a year. Um, he's got pictures of meeting her. She signed a guitar that he has there. He played a little bit of guitar for us. He is an amazing guitarist. Yeah, he, he just, you know, he's like, oh yeah, I've got, I broke my finger doing the mountain climb or the mountain run thing. Run, yeah. yeah, that I ran 21 times. And they give you a plaque if you do it 21 times. It's like... <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> and he's like, you know, he's plays like, yeah, sometimes I have a hard time reaching the thing. And meanwhile, it's like, it's he's like, playing I, incredible flamenco guitar. Yeah, yeah and then it's just like, yeah, I'm, it's just a hobby thing. I'm not very good at it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Okay, dude. So, and then he was, uh, you know, he was a constable for a while and he was a part of like the murder society in Falkland. So he's, he's got a. Excuse me? Yeah, that was something you missed. Yes, there two days I, ago. I, 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 I missed that. that. Yeah, it was like something like the Murder Society. Or, there might be a, di- a slightly different name, but it was essentially like a society devoted to, I guess, like documenting famous criminal cases or something. Oh, okay. That seems you know, a little more we don't actually go by murdering people. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Scotland's a peculiar place. <laughs> yeah. So, so I don't know. Like on, I guess this might be a little more, but because of the kind of character he was, you know, how excited Music Bob was for me to meet Antique Bob or Violin Bob. We'll call him Violin Bob. That seems better, yes. Um... And then the fact that I might not come back in the in the 
like near near future it might take me a while before i can i can have the funds <laughs> to return but it feels like some one of those things that if i come back i might find out that you know like bob is not running his shop anymore bob is dead you know kind of deal <laughs> and i would feel kind of bad if i didn't have something to remember like his character by and so i was super yeah. excited to be able to go back and it was just going to be one of those things of like like i'm going to buy a book and like oh can i take your picture outside but he was he was chatting us up he played some guitar and i filmed a video of him playing guitar and um you know he seemed really interested in talking about when we're flying out and um you know he's interested. a very personable guy yeah he's a very personable guy and then and then he still was a good chum and went outside and struck a pose out in front of his window for me so uh, so i right. was pretty excited about that. so what did you learn in scotland you've been here for two weeks what is the thing that you learned that um, you will take home with you i guess it's um, I guess as again, something Colin said that when you when you live in an area for so long, you sometimes take for granted the things around, and you don't really look at it in a like you when you look at it as a person who lives there as opposed to a, mm-hmm. a tourist. But um, I realized that I don't really know a lot about the region of Waterloo. It's history. It's interesting things. Like I, I in the pre-show, I made the comment that um, people ask me what what's there to do in town, and I honestly don't know. Like I know there's places to go but i've never been there like um alora gorge the schneider house i know these places exist you know Joseph schneider house? no i know you didn't grow up here that's yeah. why yeah so like i know these places ha- exist but i very rarely have ever gone to them um so as attractions i i i know they exist i can point you towards them but um and and i again i don't know the history of waterloo whereas here um and it could be just a function of living here all your life and it being a smaller community but mm-hmm. Um, and also in a, a concerted effort by the government to, to preserve things and tell a certain story. Um, but it just seems like the information that everybody has here about their home uh, makes mine pale in comparison. Like it's just I know very little. So that's something that I'm taking away with, uh, away from here with me is that um, I need to appreciate where I live a little bit more and learn a little mm. bit more about stuff that doesn't, pertain to the immediate current events so the thing that I learned um, is and I did a video about this on my other channel is that sort of the act of touring Europe like coming from the Americas to tour Europe um, is sort of rooted in this weird thread of white supremacy like we, we come here and we look at all these things and we marvel at how old they are um, without sort of critically refre- reflecting on the fact that there are things at home that are just as old, only they were destroyed. Like, the culture that created them has been ravaged and destroyed by colonialism. And I remember sort of, sort of wandering about and, and seeing some markers and being like, there is stuff in Canada that is this old. There, there are cultures that go back vastly farther than, than what we would refer to as, like, Scottish civilization, mm-hmm. uh, which, you know, charitably is a thousand years old, yeah. at least. Yeah, it was all Celts and Picts before that. Yeah. But um, it, is, it is, and it is not just sort of gone um, in the sense of, of, of being wiped out or, or continuing to be wiped out by colonialism, but it is also irrelevant. Like, it is, it is treated as irrelevant. History in, in Canada in school starts with, uh, you know, uh, Champlain and Frontenac, and that, that is where it begins. There was nothing before that. Uh, and it is curious and sort of um, concerning to me that that is how we approach it. But we had to come to Europe to see it. Um, and and marvel at the age of the stones and the cathedrals. So it is not so much I think that that I feel a deep seated need to learn learn more about First Nations history. I do know a bunch about First Nations history in our region. Um, but it's that I want to place sort of additional you know, European history and things like that in that wider cultural context. Because 
it matters. It, it hit me. We were at uh, the Edinburgh Palace or the castle, and uh, they had a statue commemorating Scottish lives lost during the Boer War. Mm-hmm. And I'm like no, Stirling Castle. Stir- was that yeah. was it was that Stirling? Stirling? That was Stirling? Stirling Castle. Okay. Yeah, it was in Edinburgh. And it was a castle. It was Sterling no, Castle. It was in you, Sterling. It was you Sterling came castle. back to the car and told Corey and I about it. Just after okay. the Wallace Monument. We didn't, uh, the outside of the Edinburgh Castle You're was totally like right. a tattoo. You're totally right. There was, I don't even remember if there was any statues yeah. there. But yeah. you're, you're, you're 100% right. Regardless, so, it was a statue. Uh, also, a I can't keep track of which castles I was in. <laughs> but there's a statue there commemorating um, Scottish lives lost in the Boer War. And, like... Which is a really weird colonial context because the Boer War is not one of those wars where you're like, two nations are fighting and they both want the same thing and they can't both have the same thing. No, one nation is fighting over a thing that what another nation, arguably a nation, has. Mm -hmm. It is a war of colonialism. Mm -hmm. And the notion that we would commemorate or celebrate that seems real weird, even though we do it all the time. Um, so yeah, that, that sort of started that thread and got real bothersome with me. Uh, is the thing I'm going to have to take home and do some more mulling over. Yeah! <laughs> the thing that super frustrates me as well, though, is it's like, our history does go back sort of beyond like the first wars of independence and all that stuff, but because there's been white people here for so long, it seems like it's okay to teach that. Well, I mean, it, it sort of is. Like, that. Is, yeah. that is your history. Well, but our history was, like, we were the ones that people were trying to turn into a colony. Like, the Romans came and tried to... Yeah. And we, they built a big wall, because, like, you know, you guys just stay in there. Like, you're weird. <laughs> Get back. You know, and then, like... You, like I've, I've had people tell me, like, oh, you know, 1707 was Union of the Crowns. England took over Scotland. And we ruled you. It's like... It wasn't how it was supposed to work. Like, what, what's going on here? Other things that weird me out... That I learned and weird me out about Scotland include the fact that... It is weird to be in a country that does not have a history of being colonized. Yeah. Cause being we, invaded is different. Yeah. We drove off the invaders. We never got... Col- the Romans tried to colonize us and we didn't <laughs> let them. It is weird. <laughs> and the I, best you like, can say is... Um, in ways James, that are hard to describe. Yeah, the best you can say is James the Fourth ascending to the throne of England to unify James Scotland. Six. And, six? I, James VI. Uh, six, six Scotland, first of England. I must be dyslexic because I thought that I read four, but yeah, anyway, six, six, it's either IV or VI. In this case, it's VI. Yeah, um, you're just you can't am, do numbers I am, tonight. I am I am terrible. At numbers. <laughs> Three right. strikes, he's a Three strikes. So so if you could do it all over again, what would you do differently? So I loved how much we did. Like it was basically a smorgasbord um, sampling of most of the yep. like the highlights, the greatest hits of Scotland. Um, what I would almost want to do next time uh, when I come back is to take all the stuff that we did, kind of cut it in half, and then stretch that side out to the two weeks, like, for example. Um, because there's so much, as Jim said, we drove through, like, four towns today, and each of the four towns, you could have spent a half day there minimum. That's the ones we stopped in. We drove the, through more. Exactly, yeah. and those are the ones that we stopped in. You could have spent a half day in there. Uh, just kind of walking around and seeing, again, what the local tourism board has set up to kind of uh, highlight and showcase the various things uh, around town. Edinburgh should be at least a day alone. Like, the, the when we when I found the, the, or I guess you had first found them, but the plaques on Rose Street, talking about that, and then mm-hmm. you were talking about Jekyll and Hyde. Like, that would have been interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, walking... You said there was another mile, so like there was the Royal Mile, but then there was an associated other mile. I think it was the Rose Street one. Is that the Rose Street one? That's that was, the mile. That was, that was the drinking one. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, like there was <laughs> there was so many other things to have seen. The trip to Sky realistically should have been three days, like one day of driving, one day of there, and one day back, and we tried to do it all in a single yeah. day. Um, so there was just so much to take in. Uh, so I would probably, uh, in the future, or if I were to do it over again would um, probably not even leave Fife. Or if I step out of Fife, you know, I'd go to Edinburgh. Is Dundee in Fife? No, No, Dundee's the no. side. Yeah, so you, I would probably go maybe to the adjacent. Yeah, Dundee's like 20 minutes away. It's not like we're just big stretch together. Yeah. So I, I would probably do something like that. I think it's... it's, it's Now that you've done the greatest hits, too, mm-hmm. you can you, you, yeah. you can sort of say that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a thing to come away with. For, for me, uh, I learned a whole bunch about being in car rides with people. I've never been on an intercontinental journey with another person before. I have 
my previous like long journeys I've typically taken by myself. Um, and I, I'm very different when I'm by myself traveling. I have like a mandatory extrovert policy and, you know, I have a bunch of like strict sort of rules and routines that I, that I adhere to. I have like a space that I'll set up like in a hotel room and like, and all of that sort of gets disrupted when you're traveling with other people. And I find the need more consistently to like recharge my social batteries so, um, I would sleep in the car more. Um, I've spent the last, like, what, four days. Every time we're between towns, I just sort of doze in the car. And it just helps me relax, and it makes me feel like I don't have to be switched on all the time. Which, I know that, I know, like, academically, I don't be. Yeah. I don't have to be, but I feel like I should. Mm. And so it takes some of that pressure off me. But I said to you, I do the same in the car. That's why I always have a playlist or an audiobook on mm-hmm. in the car. So I can just switch off, concentrate on driving, and just... Yeah, but I'm not even driving. I'm yeah, just, but I, I don't I'm feel like I'm waiting. Maybe I'll sit in silence because I'm being a weirdo. Also, like, I did spend the first four or five days, like, admiring your picturesque Scottish landscapes. I get it. You have rolling hills and vistas and locks and shit. Hills made of dirt. Shit gets boring after a while, right? <laughs> I can hey, I only look at the same hill of sheep... Or the giant concrete thing outside of Dundee. That's my um, drive to work four days a week. How do you think I feel? I haven't the slightest idea. <laughs> That's a nice, interesting contrast because I'm I'm the one with like 500 pictures uploaded <laughs> yeah. so far. Now. And like, there's a lot of pictures of the same thing, just like different distances. I just couldn't bring myself to delete I, it. I have I have a bunch of pictures of Hawk taking pictures of things. I I I have about 80 pictures, but they're all really weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I understand it though because I've started I don't notice it as much anymore because I live here like that drive to work I don't notice it half most days like I'm, I'm here and then I'm in Dundee and I'm like how did I get here yeah because I just kind of switch off to all and concentrate on driving so I understand yeah okay it gets a bit dull after a while but I'm sorry I live somewhere so pretty <laughs> after a while I gotta I gotta inured to it um <laughs> so yeah Scotland we're going home. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny. When we first got here, I was, uh, I think it was mostly like the jet lag and the fatigue. I was like, man, like, I just can't wait to go home and rest. But that once I slept, I was like, and I started to see things, it's like, man, like, this is really cool. I, and then all of a sudden, like, two weeks flies by, and I'm like, ah, as much as I want to go home, I don't want to leave. I don't want it to end. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, this is your magical Narnia land. Yeah. You know you're always welcome back. No, we will, we will let you through customs. <laughs> you maybe not. Back. Yeah, yeah, you you maybe not. That seems fine. You maybe put on a list. I it wouldn't be the first watch list that I'm on. <laughs> you're uh, gonna be the, treated as the equivalent of a ring wraith. That seems fine. <laughs> no man can Puppets. beat me. Um. So final thoughts on Scotland. Um. Really glad that we did this on a whim so to speak even though it's been you know six or six or eight months in the planning but i'm really glad that we did it um i'm really happy with the entire trip i mean i didn't really have a lot of preset expectations but um i've enjoyed everything and i'm and this time like this is in contrast to my trip to kenya i'm so glad that i was more diligent with documenting it like every day had pictures being uploaded most days had emails going back home that kind of summarized it and then i vlogged every night as well so i i can basically relive a lot of the trip like there's a little details but i'm so glad that i had um, documented it so thoroughly so um it's not something that's gonna be like oh yeah i went to this place once 10 years ago so fair fair um i really liked hanging out with a bunch of people here I learned a bunch of things, uh, not just about colonialism, but also about, you know, playing music and old buildings and a bunch of things that are probably going to improve my D&D game. <laughs> uh, not how our names come from. <laughs> I'm, excited. I'm excited. I got to hang out with a bunch of really cool people, thanks to you and your friends. My friends are pretty rad. Yes. And I got to run a killer game of D&D in a pub. That was so much fun. Which is all, always a good time. 
So, uh, yes, thank you very much, Theo, for guiding Always. us and hosting us. And Always. I'm just very glad I got to hang out with you guys again, because hanging out on the internet is very different than hanging out in person. It's mm-hmm. true. And you're very patient to put up with me for two weeks, so good job, guys. <laughs> so, from Scotland, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. I'm Theo. And we're signing off. Stay awesome. Woo! Do you know why that is? Uh, because you're covered in a slick oil like a salamander. No. Um, you're secretly Ryan from the Mirror Universe. No. I feel your shorts, you're rubbing on your legs. No.